Bill Harrelson's record-setting journey over the North and South Poles took 24 days. His airplane, a highly customized Lance Air 4 that he and his wife Sue built for extreme long-distance flights. Harrelson had already set a world distance record for a non-stop flight from Guam to Florida, but the flight over both poles was an even tougher challenge. Well, we looked at various uh, major world records and uh, we saw that the uh, speed around the world over both poles, is a, that that had last been set in this weight class airplane 28 years ago, and we thought we'd have a pretty good chance of beating it. To cover such vast distances, the Lance Air had to be highly modified. It can hold a, a grand total of 361 gallons. Ten fuel tanks on board, getting as much fuel as we could as far forward as we could was uh, one of the keys to, uh, to this aircraft. With a full fuel load, the aircraft is highly unstable. You can't think of flying hands off, you can't think of turning the autopilot on for four or five hours at least. It's not pleasant to fly. Harrelson had five different GPS systems for navigation, but only one engine, a normally aspirated Continental IO550. The equipment held up pretty well. Uh, the engine in particular, the big worry, uh, was absolutely flawless. The route covered some of the most remote regions on the planet. Constantly having second thoughts. You know, there was a, I mean, let, let's face it, this was, it was most of the places we were if the engine had failed or I had gone down for icing or any other number of reason, I, I would not have made it. Icing was Harrelson's greatest concern because the Lancer has no de-ice or anti-ice systems and he encountered icing conditions in South America. 60 knot winds, turbulence, the airplane was at the extreme weight. Uh, I ended up having to come down below terrain height, below max terrain height and actually fly around some islands off South America, mountainous islands. Uh, just to stay out of the ice, so I wasn't real happy about that. High points included close-up views of the rarely seen mountains of Antarctica. Nothing prepared me for when I, when I first saw the mountains of, uh, of the Antarctic Peninsula and when I got close to them. Uh, they're just spectacular. I mean, they're, they're not the tallest mountains in the world, 12, 13,000 feet, but they come out of the ocean at about a 70 degree angle right to right to 12 or 13,000 feet. Just spectacular. Harrelson paid for the trip himself and didn't seek corporate sponsors. Sponsors can get you into trouble, you know. Uh, if they sponsor you, well, what time are you going to leave? What day? We're going to have the newspapers there. We're gonna, you know, it puts pressure on you. So we wanted to be able to be in a position where I could taxi out on that first leg, get to the end of the runway, decide what a stupid idea this is, turn around and go back and not have any any, any pressure. Harrelson had been planning and preparing for this journey for more than a decade. This was, this was my, my need for adventure and uh, pushing yourself a little, a little beyond what uh, you think might be possible, pushing yourself into an area where the outcome is not necessarily guaranteed. Um, I think everybody needs that. And kind of this, this, was, this was my fulfilling of that need. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live.